How did you find sort of getting your head around the, the science of, of the film? Or was there something that particularly captured your imagination? Uh, well, with, with me, it was with, with Kip, because I figured I was playing him, and I, I made very good friends with him, you know. Uh, and and I, I tried to figure it all out, but, but in the end, I haven't had an office, which is like his, would have been his office, but it was my office. And he had decorated it, and there was a 50 foot long algebraic formula around the wall, four feet high. And I said to him, is that a real thing? He said, yeah. He said, I said, who wrote it? He said, me. I said, how many algebraic formulas is it? He says, one. I said, do you know the answer? He said, yes. And I thought, you better give up here, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could learn, I learned all the sort of logistic things. I learned what you do is you learn what it means and what the, the things you say, you know, mm. what you have to say, technical terms. So uh, obviously you learn all those, you know, but it's so much to know. You ain't going to get very far. I promise you, we, he talked to Stephen Hawking on the phone every day. And wow. can you imagine what that conversation's like? Fascinating, yeah. So this is your sixth film with um, Christopher Nolan now. Yeah, yeah. Um, why does he elicit such uh, loyalty um, from you? And um, how much did you know about the film before you said yes? Well, I know everything about the film before I say yeah. Yeah, I, I have the script and everything. But I, I mean, Chris sort of regards me as his lucky charm, but it's not true. I, he's my lucky charm, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've, had, I've had six lovely movies to, to do with him, you know. And, and it's been absolutely great. But what it is, is it's like, for instance, you can misunderstand things. The first script he bought me was Batman. I thought, Batman, I'm, I'm too old to play Batman. What do you want me to play? He said, the butler. I thought, the butler, what do you want me to say? Dinner is served or something, you know? Uh, and he said, no, because nothing is what it seems with Chris. The butler isn't the butler. He's the foster father of Batman. And all the way through, it'd be, you know, bollocks him, tells him off, you know, and, and he's like his father. So it was not the butler at all, you know. Although, and then uh, I, I did a backstory for him, which, which was, you always do a backstory if it's not for yourself, it's not in the script. Mm -hmm. And I did him as an SAS sergeant who'd got injured and didn't want to leave the regiment, so he took a job in the mess so you had this extremely tough man who knew how to make drinks and surf and everything. And I used the, 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 the voice of the first sergeant I ever had in the army. So it was his voice. So what I had was a very tough butler. And there's an outstanding ensemble cast in this film, including fellow Oscar winners and, and nominees. And there's Matthew McConaughey. What was he like to, to work with and to be around on set? Oh, he's, he's great. We, we, we got on wonderfully. But he hadn't won the Oscar when I worked with him. He, he, was, he was, knew he was nominated, but he hadn't won it. But he's, he's a lovely guy. He, uh, uh, um, they all are, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain. Uh, that, that's the three I mainly work with in the movie. And they were lovely. I knew Anne anyway, because uh, uh, I'd worked with her in Batman before. Uh, but I didn't know Matthew, I just knew him. I mean, I'd, I even voted for him at, at the Oscars with that wonderful performance. But he, he was great. Lovely, and Jessica is, is gorgeous. And how resonant did you find the Dylan Thomas poem, which I think is used beautifully in the film? Well, I, I, I knew Dim, Dylan Thomas because we, we were always in the same bars around the 60s, you know. Cause, um, I used to drink, but not like Dylan Thomas. <laughs> People say, did you know Dylan Thomas? I said, I knew Dylan Thomas, but he didn't know me. You know, but I knew, these, I knew the poems, and I knew particularly this one. And what happened was it wasn't in the script. And I was on the set one day and, and uh, uh, Chris walked up and he said, I want you to say that in the next scene. Read it. You don't have to learn it. Read it. And then I read it in the commentary as well, you know, and, and I love that. I love that poem. I thought it was the greatest poem that Dylan ever wrote. And, and just finally, I know um, your love for cinema started at Camberwell Green Grand, at the, uh, the Threepenny, Threepenny Rush. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you still retain that love of, of cinema? Oh, yeah. I watch movies all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm a complete movie buff, you know. I, I used to go to school and play truant every day. I, I used to watch five films a week because I never ever went to school in the afternoon. What actually happened was I learned to become a movie actor at school and I was done with everything else. But it's, it's okay because people say, were you clever at school? I say, no, but everyone who works for me was. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's Michael Caine. Thanks very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.